Hello, this is Debbie, aka Veil the Stitcher. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Veil underscore the underscore Stitcher. Um, I am here today to provide a cross stitching update. Um, I'm feeling a lot better. <laughs> I'm still sick, but I'm feeling a lot better. I have a lot more energy, and I have met a ton of goals this week. So let's get right into it. Um, the first one. The first one I'm going to show is Polka Dot Bikini. I'm stitching this for my mom. Um, I had stitched it already, but it got destroyed during Hurricane Ian earlier, two months ago, I guess now. I don't know, time. Um, but anyway, I'm restitching this, and I my goal is to, well, my goal this past week was to get to 75%. So, let's see where I got to. I am stitching this on 25 count natural Lugana, one over one. And last week, let's see. Last week, I was kind of there. So this week, I did the next page and got the girls done, <laughs> um, along with the motifs above her, above them, and um, B-I-K. And this week, my goal is to finish this and then fully finish it and hopefully be able to show you the fully finished next week before I ship it out because my mom's birthday is in December and um, I would like to give this to her for that. So, let's see. So here we finished this part and we're now gonna get into this stuff. So there is a pineapple, some more flower motifs, and then some more lettering. Um, I love these individual motifs. Um, anyone who does Quakers probably um, enjoys the repetition of once you get a section of it done, you can just basically continue in the round um, to get the rest done without really having to think about the pattern. And that's what I love about these individual motifs. Um, oh, there's actually a cat in my room. <laughs> I had to... I gave my, my kitten an, an ultimatum. I was like, Evie, you can either be in here or not be in here. And so she was in here on the bed and I closed the door and she kind of looked at the door like, why did you close it? And so I asked her, would she like to be in or out? And she went towards the door. So I opened the door and she walked out. So now the door's closed. However, I did not realize that my older cat, um, Esther, was under the bed. So now she's kind of come out going, why are you talking? I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> so maybe if she hops up onto the bed, you might get to see her, but we'll see. So my goal is to finish this this week. I have, I have an idea in mind already of how I'm going to finish it. And I'm going to have to get a little creative and see if I can finish it with materials I already have in the house. So it might get interesting <laughs> because I am trying to minimize my spending. So that's Yellow Polka Dot Bikini by Plum Street Samplers. The next one I worked on was a Mill Hill kit. Let's get the picture. I'm working on Merry Christmas Santa. It's a very traditional looking Santa. Um, and I believe I have a picture of where I was last time. If I do, I'll put it here. Um, I basically had the white done and then the darkest red and that was it. That's all I had done. And my goal was to basically just continue with the cross stitching and you will not believe it, but I actually finished all of the cross stitching last week. Um, after stitching one over one on 25 count, which felt a little more delicate, when I started working on this, which is 14 count perforated paper, 
with like three strands of floss using a 20, a size 24 needle. I don't know. I was just kind of attacking this. <laughs> And I was stitching very quickly and I just it was just like one more color one more color And so I have finished all of the cross stitches on here and now I just need to do the back stitch and the beads And so because I was able to get so far on this I'm gonna send this to my mom along with yellow polka dot bikini so My goal for this week is to get this done and fully finished So we'll see how that goes Let's see, the third piece I worked on, I kind of have a mess next to me. Was my Mirabilia, this is Gypsy Queen. And my goal on this was to finish her skin and kind of finish her face, which has been a long time coming. Esther, you're gonna have to wait, kiddo. So this is being stitched on 32 count chocolate, I believe it's called chocolate, by Witchell. It's the college pour fabric. And here's where she is. Oh, she looks amazing. When I got to her face and I had finished the skin and I was starting to put in her eye and her lips, it just felt like such a culminating experience. It was just so amazing. Um, I'm gonna fold this up so you can see her more closely. So, I was working on this arm. Was I working on this arm? No, this arm was already done. I had already, I had started on her neck. And so I finished stitching all the skin stitches around her face. I back stitched her eye. I backstitched her lips, or colored in her lips and backstitched, and then I um, did all of the backstitching for her skin, um, for her arm over here, as well as all of this. And then I still had some time left, so I were, I put in all of the crinic for her headpiece, which was like all along here and this little piece here. Um, and basically, oh, and the other thing I did The other thing I did was in the leaves in her hair, all right here, this white is Whisper. And then there's two patches of Whisper down here. And so I put that in also. So you know what that means? Basically from the top down to her bodice is ready for beading. And I was so tempted. I was so tempted to start beading, but Nope, I'm gonna um, get, there's a lot more work to do, um, oh, upside down and backwards. In her dress, there's that um, ornament on her sash that needs crinic and beads, so I want to do the crinic in there. And then there's the huge lantern next to her knee right here that needs a, all crinic and beads. So I wanna get, and then these patches all in her dress is crinic and beads. So I wanna finish the crinic in her dress and in the lantern um, before I start beading. So I'd like, there's a little bit more back stitching um, in the leaves of her hair and in her braid, I believe. So I wanna finish that as well as the rest of the before I start beating. And with the way things are going, I mean, I really do think that I could finish her this year. So I think I'm just going to keep giving her one day a week and see where we get to. I, I think I'll get to a point where I will just be on a huge push just to get her done no matter how long it takes. Um, but this is where we got to. So th when I work on her next, I'm going to work on the ornament on her sash is where we're gonna go next so love it I love the progress I've actually just loved all the stitching in this this is a really good starter mirabilia I mean she's kind of big but if you look at her 
all of her stitching is basically block color stitching. There's really no confetti in here. So if you just pick a color and go color by color, layering them, you know, nearby each other, you can really tackle this easily. And so I did her whole dress first before I even got to her skin. So um, I've really enjoyed every stitch on this. Um, oh no, I don't have my tablet. Uh, that's okay. Um, I'm going to put in a picture here of the next piece that I worked on, which was Ex Machina um, by Chris Ortega, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. Um, this is what it will look like when it's finished. And then I also have a picture of where I started from on this. Um, my goal with this is to stitch a thousand stitches per week to the end of the year in order to get to a milestone of having 100,000 stitches remaining on the chart. Um, and I am on track to do that. So instead of showing the whole piece first, I'm gonna show you where I was stitching. And I was working on the far, on this end page right here. And the end here, there's actually about 15 stitch width of, an, of, a, of the next page. And I've been stitching those all as one, like with the full page plus the partial, just to get them done. And so I was working on this page and I finished it. So I'm gonna stick this, that's <laughs> cat sneezing. Um, I'm gonna put this over here so that you can see where it was last time and compare. I put in about, um, it took me about another 900 stitches to finish this page. And yeah, love it. Oh, the uh, sense of accomplishment when you finish a full coverage page is just so good. So I met my goal in that. And then I still had a bit of time last night to stitch. So I was looking at the pattern of like, okay, for the next row, which page do I want to work on? And I ended up not being pulled particularly to any page. So I just started on the far, the far left again, which would be right under here. So I started pulling down these colors and put in, I don't know, about 150, 200 stitches to get this page started. And so that's the page I'll be working on. It's a lot of background, soft brown color, similar to this page above here. So, hi baby, you wanna come up here? And then I can show, show you to everyone. Do you wanna come up here? Maybe? <laughs> she wants out. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is what it looks like all together. I believe at the bottom here, there's three, three rows left. I've done five rows and there's three rows left. I'm at 63% complete. And oh, I love, love this project. I, oh, I feel the finishing bug on this so hard. I just want to get her done. But at the same time, like, you know, you get fatigue. I, I get fatigue for, of working on the same project too much. So the goal of 100, page, 100 pages, the goal of 100 stitches per week has been a nice one because it kind of relieves the pressure of doing just how much can you get done? How much can you get done? Yes, you can get 1,000 stitches done, but can you get 2,000 stitches done? And that mentality just burns me out. So I'm really trying hard to focus on keeping reasonable goals. So that's where she's at and I'll keep working on that new page this week to get my thousand stitches in. Currently I am ahead of the game. I, I reached 178,000 stitches this week um, out of 282,000 and my goal is to get to 182,000. So I have um, 4,000 stitches left to reach my goal with five weeks to go in the year. So. That's really good. I'm going to try and keep up that, pay, that pace 
of getting, you know, more than a thousand stitches, just even if it's like 1100 or 1200 a week, just to give myself a bit of a buffer. <gasps> Here she is. Hi, Esther. Come here. Come here. Come here, let me pick you up. She doesn't quite like being held too much, but <gasps> here's Esther. Esther is three years old. She um, is has a super thick coat of fur. She's kind of like a really dark uh, tortoise shell. Um, but <laughs> she's like, I don't want to be held. So anyway, there's Esther. So we have a, a cat cameo. Very happy. Um, so that was all the stitching I did last week. Um, part of my... Now, I don't know if you heard that, but that was Evie. Evie's now jealous because Esther got attention. Um, so, this coming week, you know, I'm going to continue on Ex Machina to get another thousand stitches. I'm going to continue on um, Gypsy Queen to work on the ornament on her sash. I'm going to finish, hopefully finish, um, Yellow Polka Dot Queenie and have a fully finished object to show you. And then the fourth piece, I'm going to try to fully finish the um, Santa ornament. Now, in addition to those plans, this coming week is, um, Esther, you're gonna have to wait. You're gonna have to wait a little bit. This coming week is American Thanksgiving, and so I work Monday through Wednesday, and then I have Thursday and Friday as paid time off from work. So having a four-day weekend, I'm actually hoping to surpass those four goals to work on a fifth project that I feel drawn to and um, I really thought about it over the last few days of what what has really been calling to me and this fifth project is another full coverage it's actually been calling to me a lot more than Ex Machina has this year but um, Ex Machina tends to win that argument just because I have so much more done and I would like to finish it so this fifth project which um, it's called, uh, it's Supersized Impossibilium by Amy Stewart, chartered by Heaven Earth Designs. This is what it will look like when it's finished, since I didn't bring my tablet. And I started this, this last summer of 2021. Um, and what I love about this project, what really drew me to it is the idea of the possibilities behind the door. Like, if you get the door open, what's behind it? And I love that, I love that imagery, I love that thought of, you know, it's called impossibilium, but, you know, doors, thresholds, they lead somewhere, what happens when you open the door? So, I started this piece last summer It's super size. I originally started the super size max color and the confetti. Like this is already just straight up confetti. And the confetti in the max color version was so much that it was just driving me crazy. So I uh, restarted doing the just super size version. And for this project, because this is so much confetti in the corner, um, I adopted um, Jessie Marie Does stuff. Um, her method of stitching block by block on the diagonal and that really helped um, once you break it down to those you know 10 by 10 squares a 10 by 10 square is easy to tackle it's super easy to tackle and then you just move on to the next one and it really helps me get progress so it's been a year and a half since I started this and I don't even have a page finish <laughs> So that's why this has been calling to me, because I at least want to get a page finish on this. Um, not to mention reach the door. Uh, unfortunately, the page down here and the page right here is the same <laughs> confetti. And I think what I want to do is do the catty corner page next to kind of give myself something different to work on. So this will be the fifth project I work on this week and you know I mean there's still a ton of stitching there there's probably over a thousand stitches remaining but I would love to make some progress on this. 
So that'll be my fifth piece. So those are my whips and those are my plans. And the last thing I want to show you real quick is um, I've started looking at some Christmas pieces that I might want to start. And so two pieces from my stash have been calling to me. One is this, Peace on Earth by Cottage Garden Samplings. And I went, I was looking through my stash and found a couple of colors that are that were um, charted for in Gentle Arts that I actually have. And then some that I didn't, but I thought would make a good um, substitute. The only thing I'm missing on this that I would love to have in the call for color is wood smoke because you can't tell here but it it goes from like a dark brown to a medium brown and I love the effect that it looks on this finished piece so I don't know I'm debating on if I want to order the color or if I want to just substitute with the DMC to save to save funds and not spend that money but we'll see so this is mostly kitted up. I'm going to stitch it on 40 count uh, Newcastle in Stormy Night by um, Swagger, which is a gray. And I think that's going to look amazing. On 40 count, this is going to be, it's going to finish at six and a quarter stitches by six and a quarter stitches, which means I will probably frame it in an eight by eight frame. So that would be fun. The other one I've been looking at is this little guy. This is Grandpa's Pickup by um, Little House Needleworks. It's part of a series, I believe, Farmhouse Christmas is the series. I really love this because it just looks so traditional and I love the house and I love that pickup truck. So I'm probably going to stitch this in the DMC conversion, except for the red. I have a, um, a silk, I can't remember the brand, but I do have a silk that will match that red perfectly of the deep, the cranberry into the deep burgundy. And so I'm going to really enjoy working on that. And this is pretty small. I mean, it's 63, it's... 63 stitches by 63 stitches on 30 count it'll finish at four and a quarter inches by four and a quarter inches and I think I have some 18 count Ada in Vintage Country Mocha and I think I might use that for this. So those are some thoughts on that and then the last thing I wanted to show you guys is um you know, I'm currently working on a Mill Hill Buttons and Beads ornament for my mom, the Merry Christmas Santa. But I wanted to show you that I stitched this for her over the summer. This is the one of the Tropical Santas. This is Hawaii Santa. I stitched it without the bird because I don't know what bird that is. And I felt like it would look fine without it, and it does. So I stitched this over the summer, and that was a lot of fun. And then before that one, I stitched this little guy, which is, but it's the Winter Holiday Collection, and this is Santa Cruz, and he was actually my very first Mill Hill um, kit that I've ever done and to do the beads on and everything, and I just loved it so much. This was perfect. It's way smaller than the normal full-size Santa ornaments, and it was perfect. So this is um, something I stitched last year, and I gave to my mom and stepdad for Christmas. So, then, in addition to the Merry Christmas Santa, I did purchase at the same time two other Santas. This is Glacier Santa. I love that lamp. And this is Scotch Pine Santa. And I love, sorry for the glare, I love his robe. And that cardinal up top of the tree. Now these probably won't get stitched this year, but I just thought I'd share them since I'm working on that other Mill Hill Santa. 
So, yeah, uh, I, I'm feeling a lot better. I'm still enjoying my stitching. Um, the graduate class I'm currently taking is the easiest class I've taken so far, and which has really lightened my weekly load. Um, work, I just got over a huge project, um, which feels really good, so that's nice. And um, I just, I've, I've launched myself into the holiday season um, by purchasing decor, buying myself Christmas pajamas. Um, I watched this show on Netflix last night, which was called like, it's, it's something like home makeover, holiday home makeover with Mr. Christmas or something like that. It has four episodes and it's basically this interior or just a designer because he does the interior and exterior decorating for Christmas or for the holidays um, for these four different situations. And oh, if you love Christmas, just decorating or the holidays or whatever, they were perfect. Um, I love that. I kind of want to rewatch it. <laughs> so I've started putting up my decorations. So I kind of have this weird mix of like autumnal decor with like fall leaves, pumpkins, stuff like that, mixed with um, Christmas wreath, Christmas trees, um, kind of around the house, and I love it. So uh, besides that, so American Thanksgivings is coming Thursday, and. You know, typically it's a holiday where family gets together and they, they share a large meal and they just spend time together. And this Thanksgiving, um, I'm actually going to be alone <laughs> on that day. My son's going to be over at his dad's house and my brother, who I share a house with, um, is going to be working overnight. So who knows like when I'll see him. Um, so I'm going to be making my Thanksgiving meal um, and then, you know, my brother will eat it out of the fridge like whenever he feels like it so I was thinking because I'm gonna be alone on Thanksgiving basically that whole day um, that I might actually vlog during it um, show what I'm working on stitching wise kind of do vlog style for what I'm cooking um, and maybe show some of the decorations and you know just kind of make it kind of more of a fun festive day for myself as opposed to just another day. Um, I am a homebody. I don't mind being alone. Like I, I'm totally, it's actually better for my anxiety these days. But so I thought maybe I might vlog it. Um, I'm not promising it yet, but if I do, you'll probably see it posted, um, Thursday night my time. So other than that, I, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you have a wonderful Stitchy Week if you are in America or you celebrate American Thanksgiving. I hope you have a great holiday this week. Um, other than that, I, I really appreciate you watching and I will see you guys next time.